is there life after death? What is death? Where do we come from? Where do we go when we die? Has anyone ever come back? What is karma? How do we make it? What is spirit? Do we have a spirit? What is a ghost? These are some questions that we've asked ourselves across the ages of time. Come join the ghost hunters while they boldly go where few people have had the courage or nerve to go in search of answers to these questions and other pertinent secrets concerning the very meaning of life. And on December 19th, as in the past, the highest level of paranormal activity has occurred. So we're here, we're going to catch that ghost. And I'm going to be using this. This is an electromagnetic field detector. And the charge on here will indicate the amount of charge that is around me, which will be indicating paranormal activity around me. All right, uh, well, we're about to get started, so uh, thanks for joining us. And stay tuned, because we're going to catch a ghost today.
right here. This is where I expect we'll find something. Is there anyone here who would like to communicate with us? Charles is the room they say that uh, it's probably most haunted of all the rooms up here. It's the mystery room. And I think we should probably ask him a few questions here and maybe we can get a response on that. All right, that sounds like an idea. <clears throat> We're making a record of all sounds here, the voices or anything else. Are you aware of us? Why do you move the stools around in the mystery room? Apparition. The supernatural manifestation of the soul of a deceased person or animal that are known as a ghost. Uh, the uh, cold spots, you notice any cold spots in there? There's a couple cold spots. There's one upstairs in the sci-fi room, and it's an area that does get really cold more than any other place in the store. scientific theories. The previous owner and I were changing light bulbs upstairs in the literature room. And it was a beautiful day, just like it is right now. And her and I were the only ones in the store. And she was up on the ladder and I was holding it for her because we have like four and eight foot, 12 foot long light bulbs that have to be changed. 
So she was changing the light bulb and she goes, Sue, did you see that? And there had been a shadow that had went across the window of the literature room, or of the mystery room, excuse me. It went from that room to the second mystery room and came through and came right at me and just like it went right through me and hit me in my right arm. My arm actually felt a lot of pain and I stumbled and Debbie got down and she goes, Sue, are you okay? And I said, no, I need to sit down. And tears came in my eyes. I said, he went through me. I actually felt it go right through me. And that was the worst experience I had with him. Ectoplasm. Now there's a word that became very popular in the 1980s upon the release of Ghostbusters. Actually, ectoplasm was first coined in 1894, and it referred to the white substance that appeared on a medium skin upon a seance. Now today, <coughs> today ectoplasm refers to a white cloud, ectocloud, that a ghost as it appears draws all the energy, becomes an ectoplasmic image, if you will. Now they have been seen as white swirls of light, but today, as a ghost appears, that is ectoplasm. We have a spirit here with us, a Union soldier. His leg has been amputated and he has a pained look on his face. He's so close, I feel as though I could reach out and touch him. He's so cold. He just went through me. He's gone now. Electronic voice phenomena, also known as EVPs, are believed to be voices of spirits captured on audio tapes or digital recorders. Just saw another ghost. What? A girl up in the literature room. What was she doing? Just looking at books. Wow, that's a new one. Yep. I haven't seen her. 
Ignore me completely. Oh, she didn't see you? No. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to tell him about that one. Yeah. All right, let's get this down and go home. Sounds good. Okay. He has done now. He gave Mike and I a good scare a while back. It was at closing time, and I had come back in the store, and we were working on some books right over in the romance section. Uh -huh. And I was sitting on the bench, and I was putting books away. And we could hear somebody walking upstairs. And I said, Mike, how many customers do we have left in the store? He said, I think there's at least one or two. I said, okay. So we just kept working because we were shifting things around. We got to looking at the clock, and it was like 10 after 8. And I said, why don't you run upstairs and see if there's anything we can do to help them, and that way we can tell them that, you know, We've already closed. Right. So Mike went upstairs, came back down, and said, Susie, there's no one up there. I'm like, okay. So we went ahead and finished up. I said, okay, well, we'll close. About the time I said close, we heard stomp, stomp, stomp. I'm like, somebody's up there. They're toying with you. He went back upstairs again, came back down. He said, there is no one up there. I said, you check every room up there. Because we have... One room that you can go into, it's, a, it's a, just a storage room right now. We're going to turn it into another room later. Mm -hmm. And I said, did you check to see if anybody went in there? Kids will play pranks if they can. So he went ahead, went back up. No. I said, okay, let's close. I said, go on upstairs, turn the lights out. I'll start closing out the register. Came back down. Mike was as white as a sheet. He goes, he's followed me. I'm like, what? He goes, he followed me, he followed me. And I'm like, no. So I said, okay. And all of a sudden, I, I got ready to come around the counter. I said, we're both going to go up there. And I heard step, step, step. I'm like, okay. So I went to the steps, and we flipped on the light. And I go, look, I'm coming upstairs. You got your choice. Either let me close the store down or go away. Got up there, and it was like this cold breeze come right up to us. I'm like, okay, what's this about? So we went upstairs and we did a form. We have a format you have to follow when you open and you close the upstairs. If not, he turns the lights on. So we went ahead and we went through every single room. And we could feel there was a cold breeze. And it was not hot enough to where you would feel air conditioning or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was cold. I was shivering. And I'm like, he is actually following me. And it was... We got to the back around to the top of the stairs at the landing, and this breeze came through, and I said, okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I've had enough for one night. And I said, you can do what you want. I'm going home. Good night. Flipped off the lights, and we left. <laughs> is considered one of the lowest forms of paranormal activity. It is a human spirit, a human soul. That is an orb. seen the ghost. <laughs> is it a guy? Is it a girl? Yes. No, it's, well, actually, we have one of each. 
Michael. So we do have a man and we do have a woman and we have seen a small boy. Is that, is, is that period, uh, like, uh, are they dressed in old clothes or? Yes. I've seen him on several occasions. I've seen him upstairs. Um, at that time, it was more just a shadowy figure that went across. But I've actually seen him standing downstairs right across the counter. And he was dressed in a long black cloak, tall gentleman, and had a, a green hat on, of all things. Was it a tall hat? Or? No, it was more of a flat hat than he had on. He had on uh, a white shirt, ruffled at the neck, ruffled at the, at the end of the sleeves. I could not see his face, but he was very distinct. And this happened on two separate occasions at the same time, about quarter to late in the evening, which is about 15 minutes before close. Mm -hmm. And I had come back for closing. Mike was working. And I came in and I said, who was the gentleman you were talking to? And he looked at me and he said, Susie, there hasn't been anybody in the store in the last 20 minutes. I said, Mike, there was a gentleman standing here. And he says, no, no. And I described him. He said, there's been no one in the store whatsoever. Two separate occasions I've seen him do that. And it was just like he was having a conversation with Mike. Sue Cantrell returns to her store for closing. And as she approaches the store, she notices a customer inside the store with Mike. But this is no ordinary customer. There's a man standing right there no. who had on a black coat and a green hat. No. There was somebody standing right there when I pulled up. Hasn't been anybody in here? Hmm. About six months ago, I had a gentleman come in, and this was early in the day. And he was right down here at this bookcase where all of our true crime is. And he was getting some books, and he came back up to the counter, and it was the first time the gentleman had ever been in the store. And we were at the counter, and we were talking, and he said, oh, this is the first time I've been in here, great store. About that time, books started coming off of the, the shelf, all on their own. It was not done in a dominoes effect. This was actually coming out on the shelf and landing on the floor. He looked at me, and I looked at him, and I just smiled. I didn't say anything. And I said, oh, you know, no big deal. And he said, okay. So we continued our conversation. A couple seconds later, it happened again. He goes, did I not put the books on the shelf right? I'm like, well, maybe. And then about four books came off the shelf at one time. He says, thank you very much and have a good day. And he walked out of the store. Poltergeists. Poltergeists in the films, movies that you see have been depicted as evil entities. Paranormal activity or spirits that can do harm to you or myself. Paranormal experts believe that poltergeists are actually the spirits of young, mischievous children. The word poltergeist is actually German. Polter meaning noisy, geist meaning, meaning ghost. If you see books flying off shelves or furniture sliding about, loud footsteps at night, you're probably dealing with a noisy ghost, the spirit of a young child, a poltergeist. Oh, I'm 
book belt. Usually you hear it upstairs, not down here so much. So you enjoyed yourself today? No, maybe not. <laughs> How much? 625. Okay. Well, you just keep it <laughs> Thank you.